Research institutions consistently ask for a unified front end to storage and compute for both researchers and administrators. As AWS offers more than 300 services for workloads of many shapes and sizes, this can be overwhelming for researchers who want to focus on what they do best, research. Researchers do not want to configure networking, security, and identity and access management only to get to the proper compute and storage they require for a specific project. Similarly, IT administrators need to provide unified access for researchers to pre-approved resources without having to configure the backend for every individual in each of their projects. To address researcher and administrator concerns, we have built a secure research portal that enables access to required AWS services, such as EC2, EFS, SageMaker, Bedrock, and more. The portal can be accessed by entering user credentials linked through AWS IAM Identity Center to either your AWS managed or on-premises directory. Upon signing in, you will first see a list of the accounts available to your user, if any, each with a set of allowed permissions for access to the AWS console and CLI. Note that the accounts listed may vary depending on your specific setup, but what you see here is based on the best practice baseline for an AWS organization, deployed as part of the Landing Zone Accelerator, or LZA, on AWS. The services we will explore in the Applications tab, above, are deployed in the Shared Services account as part of these best practices. When we head into the Applications section, we see the core of the Secure Research Portal, access to the most crucial applications for a given researcher. These applications can include Open On Demand and Research and Engineering Studio on AWS, or RES. Clicking into the RES icon sends us directly into the portal. Research and Engineering Studio on AWS is an AWS-supported open-source product that enables IT administrators to provide a web portal for scientists and engineers to run technical computer workloads on AWS. RES provides a single pane of glass for users to launch secure virtual desktops to conduct scientific research, product design, engineering simulations, or data analysis workloads. When we head to My Virtual Desktops, we can access deployed desktops, each with software stacks that can contain pre-installed software and integrations. This user has three desktops deployed for separate purposes. We'll start with the Slurm cluster login node. In the login node, we have installed Paraview to visualize results from an open foam fluid dynamics simulation. In the terminal, we can view all of the files and directories associated with this particular user. We also have direct access to two separate clusters deployed via AWS Parallel Cluster, which we will explore later in this demo. The first cluster is the default, but can be specified with the name PC380. This particular cluster has two Slurm partitions, General and Desktop, one of which is currently running a job on a node. If, for example, the job results need to be visualized, such as seen here, job data can be stored locally on this login node and uploaded to Paraview. Let's now explore the Windows desktop with RStudio installed. In this desktop, we have installed Visual Studio Code and integrated it with Amazon Q Developer to assist with writing and testing secure, optimized code, including integrations with AWS services. For example, Q can help us write code for downloading files from S3 buckets our user has access to. Q quickly produces a function as well as steps to integrate this function in our existing code. We can also open the Windows File Explorer to access storage attached to this desktop, particularly this user's home directory folders and files. With Windows VDIs, we can mount different kinds of shared storage, including file gateway backed by S3 and FSx for NetApp ONTAP using SMB or NFS protocols. The external drives can be attached to user projects in res. Last of all our user desktops is a Linux virtual desktop pre-installed with a Jupyter Notebook and Athena Visual. In the earlier example of the pCluster login node, we said we could submit a job to the Slurm cluster. After the job is completed, the output of the simulation will be in the shared storage. By connecting our Jupyter Notebook to this shared storage, and then running with Athena Visual, we will be able to analyze or visualize the results, in this case, the changing pressure and density. Beyond access to virtual desktops with pre-installed software and integrations, Res offers several other features for users as well as administrators. Desktops owned by other users can be shared with you. Note that in order to connect to a desktop, the session owner must be connected as well, unless you're an admin or owner. While sharing a session, you can configure permissions for your collaborators. For example, user one can provide you read-only access to their shared Linux T3.medium for collaboration. 
The Res File Browser allows you to upload and download files, among other actions, within your Elastic File Storage user directory. When this EFS store is attached to a given VDI, data is instantly synced between this file browser and your desktop, as both are connected to the same underlying file system. As a Res administrator, you can view the Session and Environment Management sections. The Res dashboard allows you to view high-level stats on all virtual desktops deployed across your Res environment, including instance types, session states, base OSs, and projects. Sessions allow you to dive deeper into all the virtual desktops deployed across your environment, viewing information such as session name, owner, instance state, and more. Software stacks are the Amazon machine images you can provision for each virtual desktop, installing a base OS as well as any additional software and integrations needed for the researcher. While Res comes with many pre-baked software stacks, you can also create your own customized stacks. Permission profiles are used to grant specific permissions for shared desktops, such as view only, admin level, owner level, etc. In this case, the only available permission profile is for view only. Under Environment Management, you can view all Res projects, which form a boundary for virtual desktops, teams, and budgets. Projects typically include one or more environments, which can be customized to meet specific project requirements, such as compute resource type and size, software stacks, and the networking configuration. All Res users can be viewed in one window to search for specific attributes, such as email, role, status, and more. Similarly, all groups and file systems can be viewed across multiple attributes. Currently, Res supports Amazon EFS as well as FSx for Lustre and NetApp ONTAP. The environment status pages display the deployed software and hosts within your Res environment, such as software version, module names, and other system information. With snapshots, you can save your environment state and migrate data into a new environment with the same state. Lastly, General Settings displays product configuration details such as your identity provider and directory. Let's now take a look at the Parallel Cluster UI, which allows us to deploy and manage Slurm clusters via a GUI. Within the Clusters page, we can view and manage currently deployed clusters as well as create new ones. To add a new cluster, we can create and deploy the underlying config file from scratch step by step, via an upload of template, or based on an existing cluster, such as PC370. Under the details for each cluster, you can view and download the cluster's config file. In addition, you can analyze the cluster's currently provisioned instances and storage, job status, and previous CloudFormation stack events. Notice that our previously accessed PC380 cluster appears here, and we can view any jobs that have been submitted from res or elsewhere. Stack events can be useful to analyze any errors that occurred in deployment of this cluster. Heading back to the AWS app screen, we can access Open On Demand, which is an open source portal for access to HPC resources. Upon first logging in, you can access a number of features, including your home directory file storage. The folder and files in this directory are linked specifically to your user profile, in this case David, and can span across the many projects and jobs you may be running. Within the Job Composer, you can view all completed and failed jobs that have been submitted to your underlying clusters, including the script details. In this case, we have assigned four CPU nodes in the Slurm General Partition for an astrophysics simulation running Athena++. To adjust the specifications for a job, such as the underlying cluster or script, you can edit the job options for that specific job, and then you can submit that job to be run on your specific cluster and parallel cluster. To interact with a virtual desktop directly, you can access My Interactive Sessions and view what has been configured for your user. In this case, we can launch and access a Linux desktop, FASRC, RStudio Session, or Jupyter Notebook Session all on your institution's academic cluster, which in this case is one of the parallel cluster clusters. Upon launching the Linux desktop in this case, you can access the terminal to run any number of Linux commands, including list to view all the files available to this user, as were previously seen in the file storage window on Open On Demand. When comparing the password entry for the user, David, on this Open On Demand Linux desktop versus the Res Linux desktop, you can see the entries are almost identical. The only difference is the home directory path. When we connect to the FASRC RStudio session, we can jump right into an RStudio session and run analyses with the data from our user's home directory, 
which is the same set as we have been seeing across desktops and interfaces. Lastly, we can similarly access our Jupyter Notebook session to view our user's home directory and interact with data as we need within a Jupyter Notebook environment. Our deployable sessions and desktops are certainly not limited to what we have seen, but rely on what is needed for any specific project. Next, we access Amazon SageMaker Studio, which offers a suite of integrated development environments for machine learning workflows, including Code Editor based on Code OSS, Visual Studio Code open source, Jupyter Lab, RStudio, and Amazon SageMaker Studio Classic. Studio Classic allows us to access an attached EFS volume where, for example, we can pull Git repos for access to Jupyter Notebooks compatible with Amazon SageMaker, such as the Amazon SageMaker Examples GitHub repo. In this example, we are running a geospatial ML notebook with access to pre-built SageMaker geospatial models and datasets. Walking through this notebook, we can explore the step-by-step -step instructions on configuring access, setting up the environment, and dependencies, gathering the necessary input data, running a job, and visualizing the results. Throughout this notebook are many additional experiments and visualizations that can be performed on this data, including visualizing snowfall, as well as satellite imagery cloud coverage over a particular region. For further learning on Amazon SageMaker and the models available for deployment, please explore SageMaker Examples GitHub repo further, as it contains many more Jupyter Notebooks across a number of use cases. Lastly, as another example of an application researchers can use, Let's explore the capabilities of our Amazon Bedrock Chatbot, a multi-model and multi-rag powered chatbot deployed for use in this account. Here, we can explore the capabilities of high-performing foundation models from leading AI startups at Amazon. In the playground, we can select from a number of LLMs and compare their output for more informed decisions when choosing an LLM for a solution. For example, we can choose Anthropic's Cloud V2 on the left and Cloud V2.1 on the right connect each to a specific RAG data source, and send a prompt for each model to respond to. As you can see, each model responds slightly differently, which allows you to decide which model best suits whatever needs you may have for a Gen AI solution using LLMs. As has been seen with the Secure Research Portal, researchers can be provided access to any number of different AWS services, securely and easily, from Amazon Bedrock to Amazon SageMaker and Research and Engineering Studio. The main question to ask is what do your researchers need most, and we as AWS can help to deploy the optimal environment in this portal.